if you wave an AR around in public like you just don't care, especially in California, that's not gonna end well for you. Palm pepper spray is next generation OC spray. It's hot, hot at 1.4% major capsaicinoids and its modular design means you can customize it exactly to you. Three different setups, lots of different color combinations. You can make it exactly as you like. And the flip top safety prevents accidental discharges. It's 10 to 12 foot range and 25 half second blasts. Make sure that you can keep that long range eye poke at long range. I trust Palm OC and I recommend it for everyone for self-defense. Hi everyone, welcome to today's badge cam lesson here at Active Self Protection. I'm your host, John Correa. I'm your co-host, Mike Williver. On day 35 of not forgetting the name of the location, Go read the news stories I've linked in the description. This guy here who's coming down the street is terrorizing this neighborhood. He's actually had a domestic altercation with his mom where he stabbed her. And now he has a homemade AR-15 pattern rifle and body armor on. And he's wandering through the neighborhood and has ripped a couple shots off in the air leading to a whole bunch of 911 calls. Officers are going to respond, uh, including the LA Sheriff's Department. Let's listen into what happens. Get out of the way. Get out of the way. Where's he at? Where's he at? On the side. Get out of the way. 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 Move. Now. Please do not shoot. Okay, get out of the way. Drop the gun, bro. Drop the gun. Hey, I'm a notice. Slug, bro. Block off. Block off. Block off. Block off. Block off. Block off. Put the gun down! Put the gun down! Put the gun down! Put the gun down! Hey, uh, we need a car, we need a car! Hey bro, we need, let me get in your passenger seat. Passenger seat. I think he's tied with the van. We have no more there. Go, bro. Go, no, you're good, good. Just don't go, don't go too fast. Go, dude, go, 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 he's up there. Keep going, keep going. That's hits him right there, right there, with the bulletproof. A little bit further, bro, because... Drop the gun, bro! Hey, dude, drop the gun. Drop the gun. No, push forward a little bit. I'll walk with you. Go. Push forward. Please bring the car, Chris. Bring the car. Further, 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 further. Give me a good cover. Give me a good cover. That's good. Hey, man. Drop the gun, dude. Hello, my friend. It's not worth it. Drop the gun, please. Drop the gun. 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 They got crossfire. Want 
2022 King 2 is detaining the 417 suspect facing southbound on Diamond Bar Boulevard. See you Left arm facing southbound on Diamond Bar Boulevard. We're close to the unit's code. Put the gun down! Put the gun down! Put the gun down! Hey, put the gun down! 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 Two nine two King two involved in a nine nine eight. Copy nine nine eight. Hey, Just put the hands position. down. Don't reach for anything. Put the hands. Don't reach for anything. He's out of two on row. Stop stop on the bar boulevard. Exit the creek. The suspect's down. All deputies are counted. Here is a picture of the rifle that he had. You can see that it was 3D printed with a standard capacity magazine and a uh, collapsible stock. Uh, it doesn't matter. They took him out and he took the asphalt temperature challenge. Uh, his mom did have a stab wound from this, but is apparently going to make a full recovery. No one else was injured. You know, Mike, I, I wish more people understood that the Ask Podcast was literally a top 0.5% worldwide podcast telling the stories of real self-defenders every week. Yeah, it really is. And we're having a fantastic time over there. Go check it out. It's free. Uh, it's available also on the app, by the way, the video version. So check that out as well. You know, Mike, these kinds of domestics are really dangerous. And normally here on the channel, we would say, well, gosh, private citizens should have taken, taken care of this problem. But not in this case. Okay, fine. That first person, oh, wait a minute, let me get away from this guy. Or that, I, I'm not even positive if that was his mom that he first assaulted there. But everyone else calling 911, I'm totally fine with it, right? If you're not directly confronted by this guy, outsource your violence. Yeah, I just don't know how one, uh, you know, private citizen with a pistol is expected to deal with this situation. I, I think if, if you can get out of the area, get away from this guy, warn other people, whatever you can do. But I, I don't, I just don't like the odds of someone running up with their, you know, their G-Lock 17 or their, their HK to try to handle this dude. Uh, most private citizens don't practice body armor drills. Uh, and even if they do, doing that under duress is extremely difficult. Uh, your, your heart's pumping, your adrenaline's going. It's really hard to make that shot. So if you can get away in this situation, if you're presented with this problem, get away. And, and call the cops, let them handle the problem. We talk about that all the time on the channel, outsource your violence. Now, the officer who shows up here, I wanna say, you can see, he chooses the shotgun. And I think the shotgun is a really good choice. Now, the interesting part of the shotgun, of course, is that in the right range with the right load, it is incredibly effective. It is a fight stopper, but it's gotta be both those things. He's got a little bit of distance here. I might've chosen the rifle myself. The other thing I wanna talk about here, Mike, is he just shucks all his rounds out on the ground in order to put a slug in, and that's really bad technique. He could have easily just done a single slug select and kept all that ammo in the gun, which he might have needed. I'm not sure why slug select is, as, a, uh, as a technique isn't more widely taught. Uh, when I, I learned it, probably, 19, 20 years into my law enforcement career, it was, it was a revelation to me at an NRA class that we took uh, for pistol and, and, uh, and shotgun. The shotgun is a fantastic, devastating, fight-stopping weapon. I mean, it really, really is. But this sort of thing, it's so easy to teach how to get a slug. If you're loaded with, you know, completely the magazine's full of, and you have buckshot also in the uh, in the chamber, slug select is a great way to get a slug in the chamber very quickly without uh, expending all your ammunition. So. That's the difference. This guy just wasn't taught that, or he wasn't. It wasn't reinforced enough, so he didn't remember it. But the shotgun, even with body armor, is still a fight stopper. You just got to know how to use it right. Yeah, and listen, if you've got the shotgun, that this time when you're past about uh, thirty yards, thirty-five yards or so, if you're using something like a flight control wad, right? Like so, you're using that Hornady Versatite or uh, you know the the Federal flight control stuff. Um, it will usually get out to, to 30 yards or so before you start losing a single pellet off of the target. Then maybe a slug might be what you need. Uh, but knowing that and knowing it well with your shotgun, very important. And of course, 
You know, this is one of those times though, Mike, I kind of think maybe a rifle would have been a better choice because you can reach out with that rifle if you're decent with it out to, I mean, a hundred yards really, really easy. Yeah, absolutely. I, I don't know um, the situation with their rifle patrol rifle program. I don't know if every officer has one in their car or not. If you know, you can comment down below and let us know um, LA's uh, situation as far as patrol rifles go. But absolutely a patrol rifle a carbine uh you know an ar style rifle would have been a much better choice but save that i would much rather have the shotgun over for example a pistol uh, when you're dealing with someone in body armor uh, it's true that generally speaking a slug or buckshot will not penetrate that body armor but a slug into body armor is still pretty much a fight stopper if you catch them in the sternum or the ribs or whatever with a slug the back face deformation so the, the as, as far as that's going to push the body armor into the human body it's going to break bones it's going to crack ribs it's going to break the sternum and just be a really really painful situation so just because it can't penetrate the body armor doesn't mean it's not effective against someone who's wearing it and kudos to this officer for his bravery okay walking in and giving commands to a guy who's wielding a rifle, lighting it up in the air, you know he's already got victims, that takes big brass cojones, okay? And, and props to him for that. Remember, you need to know how to use that, that tool that's in your hand. And at this point, he decides, I need to shoot this guy who's walking down a private citizen's car. And as that happens, you're gonna see him here light off a shot that clearly he missed, okay? This, the, especially a slug here. If he'd have put that slug anywhere on that guy, I don't care if it's a leg shot, an arm shot, or what. I don't care if he hits him in the armor. That is gonna put this guy down. So he missed. Now you notice he's got a, a, a decent bit of uh, capability there north and south, so vertically. But horizontally, you gotta make that hit. So even if he's running a bead sight, this is why your marksmanship is so important because misses simply don't end gunfights. I think that part of the problem, John, is the, the distance to which most LE agencies train the shotgun. Uh, my old agency, we only went to 25 yards uh, with slugs and buckshot. Uh, at this distance, uh, if, he, if he'd have left the, if he had good flight control buckshot, if he'd have left that in, he could have probably probably at least reached out and touched this guy uh but they're really i have to say it i'd be too hard on this deputy but there's really no excuse for missing with a slug at this distance you need to have trained it and i think another problem is just like we talk about with your pistol stopping standing tall you know getting into a good shooting stance and taking the time it takes to get effective fire on target quickly uh is better than just shooting quickly just being the first one to shoot uh, i think had he had he stopped and given himself a second you know or however long it takes to get steadied and take the shot it might have been a different outcome but but we'll never know. And listen, people with the shotgun, sometimes if you're not real conversant with it, you can get the flinchies with the shotgun because you know some recoil is coming. If you don't know good push-pull, you learn that on active self-protection extra, maybe a, an optic, uh, you know, a, a, a red dot on your shotgun, really smart thing, can help you to kind of ameliorate all that where you know where that, that slug is going or that buckshot is going. And again, the shotgun, really good tool. You just got to know how to use it right. Now, the deputy here who comes out has a private citizen to her left and is issuing this guy commands. Man, I, I got to tell you, I get it that she's on the radio and that she is, is doing her best to control the situation. You better think through. She needs to be able to make hits as well. And you know, one thing that I, I think that we don't think about a lot, that even in the law enforcement community they don't think about a lot, Mike, is that this guy is wearing body armor. And so that makes this a harder shot. And it's probably one of the few times that I know the proper answer is the pelvic girdle, but you know, as Cartman says, and, and ignoring Cartman's advice, sometimes you just gotta shoot a guy in the dick. Yeah, Cartman wasn't entirely wrong. Um, when we talked about this uh, before we hit the record button, we, we discussed this in great detail, folks. And I gotta tell you, um, that pelvic girdle shot is is very viable. It's, very, it's probably not going to um, completely stop the person entirely. However, trying to hit someone in the head, even from this distance, under stress with a moving target is extremely difficult and the backstop she has is is okay it's 50 50 there are houses there so if she misses a little bit high for that headshot we don't know where that round's going to go so i recommend as always it's not it's not where you shoot it's why you shoot so if she has a back presentation shoot him in the buttocks or the lower back if she has a front presentation like this go for the pelvic girdle it's a much bigger surface area to, to hit with that small nine mil bullet than the head the head is very very difficult and i think to get this stopped that's where i would be aiming for the most part a pelvic girdle shot is or so i'm told excruciatingly painful so that's that's what i would have done i think in this situation john and if you put a pelvic girdle shot in him yes he still has a gun now that at least kind of puts him in place because he's gonna drop at that point he's not going to keep going and doing what he's doing when you hit him in the pelvis 
And then th that headshot becomes a much more doable thing. This was her third shot, and I did like her pace of shooting here. I think that she was trying to shoot her sights, which was the correct thing. She was just struggling to get hits. And, and okay, under crazy duress, I get it, but she's only 10 yards from this guy. Again, I can't tell you enough officers, you can't just train to the department standard of qualification. You gotta train to the level of competence and excellence so that on that day, when you're adrenalized, when you have, you know, your IQ's been, been sapped 30 points by adrenaline and cortisol, you still have the skills left residually in order to get done what you need. I think these guys did a fine job finally getting this guy on the ground. And and yes, I know some people are going to make a lot of hay about the fact that, you know, he had a, a non-registered home printed gun. I don't think that's a factor here at all. In fact, you know, he didn't hurt anybody with that. The bigger issue was the domestic that he was in with his mom and the fact that he was lighting off rounds into the air. Fighting against a, a rifle though, hey, you can win that fight, whether it's with a shotgun or with a pistol, if you're good enough to cover your ass.